Hello everyone, this is Mamo Minokamo. Today, I am going to install a tool on my computer that can clone other people's voices. The performance of this tool is truly amazing. It is called Seed Voice Conversion. Now, let us get started. You can do this with the command prompt, but using VS Code is super convenient. So today, I am going to use that to work on this. Right now, in the video, I am moving to a folder called YouTube, so it is easier to understand. Hello, if you have any reference pages, please feel free to share them. Oh, hello, Takayoma. I am using this GitHub page as a reference. There are a lot of commands and it might seem difficult, but do not worry, you will be able to operate it through the browser. You guys, you keep making such difficult videos, that's why no one watches them. Let us ignore the old man for now and move on. This is where the real work begins. First, we need to copy the contents from that GitHub repository to our own computer. In other words, we are going to... Use the git command to clone it. The commands that will appear from here on are explained in detail through a link in the video description, so feel free to check it out. Now, we have successfully pulled the contents of the GitHub repository to our own computer. One important thing to note here is that Python needs to be version 3.10 for this to work. Hee <laughs> hee, it's true that GitHub recommends that version, right? If the version doesn't match, should we just reinstall it? I handle this by using a tool called PyNV, which allows you to switch between different versions. I actually made a video about PyND before, so feel free to check it out if you are interested. Just to be sure, let is check the contents of the directory that was created with Git. The important thing here is that we are inside the directory created by the git command. Oh, looks like we're already inside the directory without realizing it. Earlier, we moved directories using the command line, but with VS Code, you can move around using just your mouse. Next, we will create a Python virtual environment. By running programs inside a virtual environment, you can prevent your computer's environment from becoming a mess. Additionally, it helps avoid conflicts with other projects. However, just creating it is not enough. We need to activate the virtual environment. All right, now we can work inside the virtual environment. With the virtual environment activated, we will install the necessary packages. The file shown in the video automatically installs all the packages, right? Yes, that is correct. You can install them using the following command. This step takes a little time, so I will fast forward through it. It is recommended to disable any security software during this process. Wait, an error at the very end? That is strange. Looking at the error message, it seems there's a URL that might offer a hint. Here we go again, another error. Should have just been prepared for this from the start. Looks like the old man still does not quite get it. Anyway, we need to follow the link in the error message and install Microsoft C++ filters. We have arrived at the page shown in the error. Let us download and install the build tools. Can I ask a question? Does this error also occur in WSL or Linux? Normally, it only happens in Windows environments. It is specific to Windows. So, this error will not occur in WSL or Linux environments. I have something to explain after installing the Microsoft C++ build tools, so let us follow the instructions for now. The problem here is, with so many options, it is hard to know exactly what to install. If you don't know, just install everything, and you'll be fine. Well, do you have any idea how much space that would take if you install everything? What the old man said was pretty random. 
so I went ahead and looked up. We should actually install. What we need to install is a specific option included in desktop development with C++. The reason for selecting this is that this workload includes the Microsoft Visual C++ compiler and related tools required to compile Python packages. Just in case someone wants to run this on WSL or Linux, I will show that in the video as well. I see, so the equivalent of Microsoft C++ build tools on WSL or Linux would be build essential. All right, the installation is complete. I am going to restart the computer now. After restarting, the next steps are to activate the virtual environment and install the necessary packages. Oh, and I also recommend upgrading PIP to the latest version. I think it should work this time, but if we encounter another error, we will deal with it. Earlier, the error happened around here. We did it! It worked this time! Applause, congratulations. Thank you. All right, let is run the script for the final step. This script downloads several different models and prepares them for performing voice conversion. Now that everything is ready, let is access it via the browser and give it a try. This is amazing. Please go ahead and try something. Got it. First, I will upload the audio. I want to imitate to the reference audio section at the bottom. Then, I will upload the audio I want to convert in the source audio section at the top. Hello, oh, I went to USJ with my family. I see, these differences reflect the design philosophy and target user base of each distribution, making them optimal choices depending on the intended use. Now, everything is ready. Let us click the submit button. Actually, the process is really slow, but I will explain why later. Normally, like in the video, it takes a long time and is not created quickly, but let's assume it is done for now. I see. These differences reflect the design philosophy and target user base of each distribution, making them optimal choices depending on the intended use. Did you understand? In other words, the audio from the top was converted to the quality of the bottom audio. Now, I will explain why it took so long and how we can improve it. First, it is crucial to check the version of CUDA on this computer. Looking at the output, the version is 12.4. However, the files downloaded from GitHub indicate the version is 11.3, which does not match the version on this computer. So we will need to modify that part. Unfortunately, since the virtual environment was created with version 11.3, we need to delete it. Simply rewriting the version and running it won't work. That is right. You just need to delete the virtual environment part. This method is recommended because you can install everything in a clean state. Once you have updated the version, the process is the same as before. So, if you want to run this locally, after adjusting the version to match your computer, eScooter version, just create a new virtual environment and install the necessary packages. Since this is the second time, instead of skipping, I will fast forward through it. But if you see this kind of output, the installation was successful. Now that we have updated the CUDA settings, let us check how the performance has changed. To make the difference clear, I will use the same sumper as before and will not fast forward this time. Whoa, 
It was created incredibly fast. I see. These differences reflect the design philosophy and target user base of each distribution, making them optimal choices depending on the intended use. This time, the speed improved with just this one fix. But there might be other areas that need adjustment. So, that was an introduction to seed voice conversion. It actually works on a CPU as well, but it is extremely slow. If you want to improve the speed on a CPU, I believe it is crucial to overcome the issues shown in the video. Oh, I forgot to mention, I recommend installing the FMPEG on the host. FFMPEG is not listed as a direct dependency, but it might be useful to have it installed on the host for converting and processing audio files. This might also be a good opportunity for you all to learn about it as well. So, everyone, I will see you next time. Goodbye.